we're not going to be worried so much about the toa part. It's more the soft. <laughs> If you're ever trying to calculate the forces of something, you have to separate the components or the forces that are going in the X direction or left and right and the forces that are going in the Y direction or up and down. So the first thing that you got to do if you're ever trying to calculate forces in a certain direction is actually separate the forces that are going in the X direction versus the forces that are going in the Y direction. And the easiest thing to do that is set up a system where you first draw out the X and Y axis, I'm gonna label the X axis in red and the Y axis in blue to help us with consistency. So sometimes the forces will just be going straight to the left or straight to the right or straight up, straight down. And so those ones, you can just say, okay, well, the sum of the forces in the Y direction is made up of this force or the sum of the forces in the X direction are made up of both of these forces. But sometimes, you end up getting a force that's going in more than one direction or at an angle. So you'll have something like this, where the angle is going to be called theta and the angle is always coming off of the X axis. So if you've got this force where it's not just in the X direction, it's not just in the Y direction, you have to separate the X component from the Y component to figure out what the total force is. So the way you do that is to make a line for the X or for the Y that's gonna go up and down and that's gonna be your force in the Y direction. And then you're also gonna make a line that's gonna go left and right for your X and this is gonna be the force in the X direction. So, Instead of having this whole system set up, you could just look at the triangle by itself. And so now we have this triangle where we've got the force that's in a certain direction We're at an angle, I'm gonna call this the force total. And it's made up of the force in the X direction and the force in the Y direction. Now this is where trigonometry comes in to help answer these types of questions. If you remember the Sokotoa, we're not gonna be worried so much about the Toa part, it's more the Sokka that we care about. So we know Sokka stands for sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. The hypotenuse being the line that's a diagonal. And we've also got cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, where if we're talking about opposite and adjacent, um, we're talking about the two legs or the not hypotenuse side. So the opposite would be the one that's not touching the angle theta. So in this specific triangle, if we were doing sine of this angle theta, I'm gonna write it in purple so we know that we're talking specifically about this theta, then it's going to be equal to the opposite. And so in this case, opposite of theta is our force in the y direction and our hypotenuse is our total force. And we can do the same thing for cosine, <clears throat> where we have cosine of this specific theta is equal to the adjacent side, which is the f of x, or the side that is touching the theta, over still the hypotenuse, which is going to be the f total. So now that we know the sine of theta, the cosine of theta, we just set up these trigonomic identities. If we know one of these aspects, we can solve for the other thing. So say for example, if you're given, say you're given f of y and you're trying to figure out what f total is, then what you can do if you're trying to get f total by itself, if you multiply both sides by f total, 
then this F total is in the denominator at one part, but on the numerator and the other side. So those two are going to cancel out. And then we're going to end up with F total times sine of theta is equal to R F Y. <clears throat> so then if you want F total by itself, which is the thing that we're trying to find, we'd have to get rid of the sine theta. So we'd have to divide both sides by sine of theta. So what you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So now that we've divided both sides, we've got, again, a sine on the top and on the bottom. So those two are going to cancel each other out. And then the final we're going to get here is going to be F total is equal to F sub Y over sine of theta. So we know this is one of the things that we can figure out and then just plugging in numbers <clears throat> to figure out what the actual values will be. Um, similarly, if I don't know what Fy is, but I know what F total is, if I multiply both sides by F total, I have to do a lot less work. And then I could say, back up here, the F sub Y is equal to F total times the sine of theta which again was just right here. So those are the two identities, depending on which one I'm trying to find, I can use to find the other one. So I've got F total and Fy on the same thing we're gonna have with cosine, but instead of the F sub Y, we're gonna be talking about the F sub X. So then on the same thing, I can multiply both sides by F total, this side as well, times F total. So now this F total is on the top and on the bottom, so it's gonna cancel out. So the first identity that I'm coming up with is the F sub X equals F total times cosine of theta. That's the first one, and that's similar to this F sub Y. Y goes with sine, X goes with cosine depending on where that theta is. There might be times where it gets flipped up and then you get confused, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. If you divide both sides by cosine of theta to get F total by itself, then you can get F sub X over cosine theta And again, the cosine's on the top and the bottom there, so they're going to cancel out. And so it's just equal to F total. So we again know there are two identities to figure out the F total or Fx, and another one to figure out Fy, F sub Y. So this is all theory until you actually get a question. So now let's put it into practice and try something out. So... Let's say we've got a 40 Newton force is applied at an angle 30 degrees, 30 degrees off the horizontal. What are F of X and F of Y? Question mark. Okay, now that we've got our question, let's apply. So back to step number one, which was setting up the uh, X and Y axes. So I've got the Y axis set, I've got my X axis set, and now I know that the total force that's applied is going to be 30 degrees off the horizontal. So this theta is now going to be at 30 degrees. And I know the F total is 40 Newtons. So 
So now I'm going to figure out what f sub x and f sub y are. So again, this f of x is going to be this line. And then my f of y is going to be this line. So I know the x is going to be with cosine values because it's adjacent. And the y value, the f sub y is going to be with sine values because it's opposite. So if I want to set it up, I know sine 30 degrees is going to be equal to opposite, which is f sub y over hypotenuse, which I know is 40. So if I want to get f sub y by itself, I multiply both sides by 40. So then I'm going to get 40 times the sine of 30 degrees. It's going to give me my f sub y. So first off, let's figure out what sine of 30 degrees is. I know that it's 1 half. So it's going to be 40 times 1 half is f sub y, which means 20 is equal to f sub y. And that is the force in one of the directions. And I'm going to do the same thing for the force in the x direction. So then I know that I'm, because it's adjacent, I'm going to be using cosine. So I can say cosine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent being f sub x, and then hypotenuse being the f total or the 40 newtons again. So same thing, multiplying both sides by 40. I get 40 times the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to f sub x. Now, first step, I know the cosine of 40, I'm sorry, I know the cosine of 30 degrees is about 0 0.86. So then it's just going to be 40 times 0 0.86 is equal to f of x. And rounding it to two significant figures, this is going to be 35 newtons equals my f sub x. And in physics, you always need to label your units, which I didn't do here. So just to quickly fix it to know that I'm ready to submit this assignment if I need to, got 20 newtons equals f sub y. And then I said 35 newtons equals f sub x. Put a box around this one. And we're good.